Hello, man. Great to know that you have all come in to tune in to this podcast. What an honor and the privilege we have here at Encounter to build men. We love men. We build men. And I've always said this. We need to concentrate on a man. When a man is better, society is better, children are better, women are flying. There's something about when men are better. One of the great testimonies we've had at Encounter is the men that are going through our discipleship, those who have already finished our discipleship program, and the testimonies that their wives have, the testimonies of those young men that now have not yet married, but they are planning to get married, they have vision, they have direction. What an incredible thing when you disciple a man. I can tell you, men, we love you. We're proud of you. And we are here to unearth the potential that is within you. Because we believe in men. Encounter is all about building men so that they can have dominion. That's, that's one of our greatest, greatest virtues that we do. So today we want to continue with our, our definition, the framework of defining a man. I know that two weeks ago I shared about the two attributes of the four, leading courageously and investing eternally. Those are some of the, the, the last two attributes that every man ought to have. When a man leads courageously, when a man invests eternally, he has now fully embodied of what a man ought to be. Again, today, I have the same guest I had last month, uh, one of my men we do life with. Right now, we are conducting a class for men, and man, it is amazing. So welcome with me, John Mugabe. Welcome back. Thank you, sir. It's uh, been an honor. Thank you for having me. How have you been? I've been wonderful. I'm firing on all cylinders. Yeah. It's just exciting to know that um, the, the, the discipleship class that we are doing is just amazing. Yeah. Men are being transformed. Last year we saw so many transformations and I believe in this through this course. Uh, if you stay the course, you'll be able mm. to enjoy so many benefits that come with the course. Yes, sir. So we want to dive into the content of today. Yes. The whole aspect of men leading courageously. Yeah. One of the things I always say, men ought to be Car leading, and leading what? Courageously. Would you just expound on that? What does that mean for you as John? How have you seen it, it play out in your life? And then yeah. we'll pick it up from there. Yeah, so um, last time we talked about uh, rejecting passivity, accepting responsibility, and leading. The next one is leading courageously. You know, when you accept responsibility, now you step into a realm yeah. of now leading courageously. I know for sure um, there's a reason why God was telling Joshua that do not be afraid. Be strong and courageous. God desires of men. And this year for men, we want men to be courageous. Yes. Courageous to take decisions. Courageous to stand for what matters most. For yes. Courageous to, to do things exceedingly that, that, that exceed your limits. Yes. Because when you're courageous, you're bold as a lion. Yes. You're bold. You're bo the, the boldness that comes with it. So we, when we talk about courageous, uh, being courageous, it's, it's men stepping into that place that God has called them to live. Yes. At my workplace, mm -hmm. being able to do what I ought to do, and I'm courageous. I'm courageous to make decisions. I'm courageous to do the assignments that have been given to me. It yes. takes courage. Yes. But it also takes courage to, to know what doesn't work. Yes. So it takes courage to not live by the myths and yeah. live by the truth. Yes. Because the myths are so many in society. And being courageous means that you will be able to stand for the truth and reject the lies. Yes. So... Being able to stand for the truth, reject the lies. Yeah. Um, one of the things I've realized that for the past almost 10 years in the corporate space that I function in mm, yeah. um, um, as a trainer, as a coach, I've seen that men have started taking a back seat. Yeah. So men are no longer leading. They're taking a back seat. They're not taking up the positions. Yeah. Why do you think... Um, the current generation, our generation we are living in, mm. a lot of men are taking a back seat. They are mm. shying away from leadership. Yeah. One of the things that I, I, I think I was facing last year was, was every time I felt someone was giving me feedback. Yeah. Yeah, especially in the, we're talking about the professional space, the, yes. the corporate space. Everyone would give me feedback. And, and some, of, of course, was biased feedback. Yeah. But then I, I, I would, the, best, the, the thing I would do is just to withdraw. Mm. Because I am withdrawing from the heart and mm. the pain mm. that this feedback is causing to my life. Yes. And many men, they say, anyway, she wants it that way or he wants it that way, let it go. 
Let me let it pass by yeah. such that I can have my space. Let me just do this for the sake of doing. Yeah. God has not called us to just do things for the mm. sake of doing. Mm. So I remember there's a time when uh, there was given a project and there was too much pressure and a lot of negative feedback on the project. What I did is that I started to take a back seat. Yeah. And when I took the back seat, the project stalled actually. Mm. The people who were talking, they never got the project advanced. Mm. The me was moving the project, I had already taken a back seat and everything came to a stand still and when you take a back seat as a man there is nothing that will move yes i summoned the courage in me yes. and went and executed the project they after the project people are asking me where did what i don't know how you did this project it is amazing the feedback that was coming through from the users yes. was now amazing and celebrating what, what i had just done so men need courage yes even when when things don't seem to work out don't faint in the day of adversity you know, you, you know, if you faint in the day of adversity, the scripture says your strength is too small. Too small. It's very small. Too small. So we don't faint in the heat. Yes. We don't be like plastic men who no. melt under the heat of, of, of circumstances. Yes. Circumstances come and you melt away. You don't melt. Men, we stay the heat. Yes. And when the beauty about that, the doc, Mr. Andaula <laughs> talked about it. He said, when you stay the heat, God joins you. Jesus joins you in the heat. Yes. And he sees you through. So men, we take on the heat. We take when things are not working out, we stand firm yes. and God will come through us. Be strong and courageous. You see, when when you talk about that, the fear of criticism yeah. has brought men down. Yeah. So men, men, men don't know how to handle criticism. And feedback. They don't hand, know how to handle feedback. <laughs> Yeah. And and they think leadership is is easy. I want to tell every man out there, leadership is not easy. Yeah. Where I sit is not easy. <laughs> um, you'll get criticism Stunning. left yeah. and right. Yeah. And you know, because men have not been trained from childhood, yeah. you've talked about the plastic man yes. who melts under pressure. I always tell men, when you melt under pressure, it tells you what you are, you are comp your composition was. Yes. Pressure is supposed to make you better. Better, yes. Men are gold. Yes. Men are gold. They're refined by fire. Fire refines them. Yes. It doesn't destroy them. No gold is destroyed by fire. By fire. It's refined. It's refined. So if you're not being refined, you know by that you're pressure. made of... <laughs> we are refined by pressure. Pressure refines <laughs> men, yeah. but it requires courage. Courage, so, yeah. Let's talk about also the risk of leadership because because leadership is a risk we take yes. to lead. Yes. And even to lead what? Courageous, Courage. Courageously. Mm. I've, I've realized that men are backing away from that risk. Yeah. They don't want to they don't want the pain to be on them. They don't want the responsibility to be on them. Mm. Have you faced that? Have you seen it? What's going on in that space of risk? Now men are, are not taking risk. What 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 are you realizing with the current man? The current man <coughs> is, um, yeah, I think we fear risks. And, and because we fear risks, we don't take them. Mm. And then the other thing is, uh, if we, we, we take them, we, are not, uh, we don't have the information enough mm. uh, to do the risks. In fact, we are, men these days gamble life, gamble oh, with life. Yeah. There's a difference between risking and gambling. Mm. Risking is you risk a calculated. It's calculated. You calculated. You know what is going to happen, and you and, and because of the abundant grace that we have, yes. we make things happen. So you've calculated it, and things the end result is assured. But then when you gamble. And many, many do that. Many, many young teenagers are doing that. They are gambling with their life. Wow. They are risking by chance. They are, and maybe when I try out this, when I try out, it's not about trying out. We need to be certain with our decisions. And so that has crippled our leadership. Yes. Yes. From crippled our leadership. And you know, if change does not come from the top, it will come from the bottom by way of revolution. Yes. So things will keep creeping and will dismantle a man, dislocate yes. a man. Yes. A man will no longer function in their place yes. because they are crippled. Yes. And things so, crept up. Crept up. You never took the risk of staying the course. You yes. never took the risk of, of building the people, your family together. Yes. And so because you never took the risk, you melt away. You melt, you, you moved away from the place. Yes. Something else crept in. Yes. Well, and, and then your family is dislocated. Yes. You're, you're at work, but you, you are doing so many things. I remember uh, at work sometime when I was not giving it my all. And, 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 and then I was not risking enough because... Well, I, I, I thought I just need to be comfortable. Yeah. I just need to get position C. As long as I can give C. <laughs> I can give just bare minimum. 
I, as long as they can pay my salary. Yeah. No. no. When when I met with Pastor Andrew, he told me you're called for dominion. You need to function in your domain. Yes. And I think the, b- between that happen within a month, people were seeing different kind of results from yeah. the same kind of man, the same person who was showing up at work because I now choose chose to take on the the risks that were ahead of me. Yeah. I took on the risk, the project. I would defend them. I would come and defend on the contract. I evaluate this, evaluate that, give feedback. To, like I was in. Engaging, I was yes, life giving yes, and yes. making people. There is another. There are people at work who are telling me, John, I love coming in your presence because uh-huh. I enjoy your presence uh-huh. because your uh, your projects are so fun. We barely feel that we are doing a project. Yes. You know, it's fun. Work is fun. I tell them, work is a calling. God yes. has called us to work, and so I took on the risk of taking on more assignments, taking on more assignments, and doing them and executing them. Men, we don't run from the risks, but and we face them. And you see, John, what you're saying is that whenever you face the risk of leading a project that can yeah. even fail, yes, the more people are drawn to you. Yes, man, I can't tell you that every society needs you. When you lead, people will want to follow. Yes, people want to follow you. And and one of the things I tell men that they should be life giving, which yes. you've just mentioned. Yeah, our leadership is what life giving. You don't you don't need to tell your wife I'm the leader. No. <laughs> I hear men saying that, but don't you know I'm the leader? No, no. 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 <laughs> the moment you say that, no, you are not. <laughs> hey, do you, because the moment you say, I am the leader here, they need to know. Yeah. How do they know? You are life giving. You're life giving. Wherever you go, Jesus was life giving. Wherever everywhere, he went, everywhere, the yes. prostitutes wanted to be around. Healings him. were around, around Healings him. Healings are around him. Yeah. The men wanted to be around him. He was a man's man. He was a man's man. <laughs> Everyone wanted yeah. to be around him jesus yes and you've just mentioned something so important that whenever you're doing your projects yes. everyone wants to be a part of the project the projects yeah they're excited to be a part of your projects now let's talk about indecision yeah and leadership yeah because i'm, I'm hearing a lot of complaints from people from from women from <laughs> for, at workplaces yeah. men men are indecisive yeah how have you encountered that even in your own life? How have yeah. you faced indecision and leadership? You see, Pastor, indecision <laughs> is decision in itself. You say decided. that again. <laughs> indecision is decision in itself. Yeah. So when you choose to do nothing, when you choose not to decide, when you choose not to take any steps, you've yeah. actually chosen. Yeah. It's a path you have taken. Yes. And there are also there are consequences to indecision. Yes. Because you you're not decisive. Because you don't bring your you your, your, you don't air out your view. It will be left out. Mm. You know the only the, the, the thing the, the thing necessary for evil to triumph is when good, good men, men do, do nothing. nothing. So when men abdicate and do nothing. The indecision lies there. Yes. You do nothing about it. You do nothing about your values. You do nothing about shaping the values of your home. I remember my kids would do, bring things up from, from outside and they would say things that I was not proud of yes. until I started bringing the, creating the atmosphere and the ambience at home. Yeah. I had to do something about it. And everything that we're praying together, doing life together with these children yeah. has been something that I've chosen to do. So you have to make a choice. You have to make a decision. Because if you don't decide, you have already decided. decided. So the men you've had, if you don't make a decision, you have already decided. decided. Yeah. So it's high time you make a decision. I always tell um, men that you'd rather make a wrong decision yes. rather than not make a decision, decision at all. Yeah. At all. Because then people are confused. So the other the other place of leadership is not only decision making but on vision. Yeah. Because we can't lead courageously <laughs> without vision. Yes. Tell me about that. Do you have a vision as a whole, as as a man and, and, and the thing that is that because vision is that compass that keeps yeah. you directed as a man. The scripture says my people perish for lack of vision, yeah. for lack of uh, direction. P- people perish for lack of uh, knowledge. When people don't mm-hmm. know where they are going. Mm. Then any road will lead them anywhere. Yes. There is a story that is told of a guy who was flying an aircraft and had people on the on the plane. They flew and flew and they arrived. Mm. And he said, "The good news is that we have arrived on the planet, <laughs> our, uh, the, our destination. destination. The bad news is that we don't know where we are." <laughs> <laughs> so that's what will happen if you don't have a vision. You take people to a place they don't know. Yes. You take people to a place. Men are taking their families to pain 
because they have caused it. They have caused it themselves because of no vision. You've taken your family to, to, to rejection. People are feeling rejected at home because you caused it as a man. Because you don't have a vision. A vision, you know, when you give your vision, when people see it, they run. Yes. At Encounter, we have a vision. Yes. We, we know where we are going. Yes. We know what God is doing in our life. Encounter Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit and have dominion. That's what we stand for. That's what we live for. And because we know where we're going, I cannot fall for, I cannot live a life, a mediocre life. No. Because I was created for dominion. Yes. So when mediocrity sets in, I tell you, mediocrity, you and me, eh, we cannot walk together. <laughs> Poverty and me, we yeah, cannot right. walk together. Yeah. Why? Because there's a vision that encounter has set for my life. Yes. A man must have have a vision yes and so vision is very profound to our lives yes and without a vision people perish perish oh, wow that's that's beautiful i you see john when you were mentioning about vision and uh, man lacking direction yeah um we've reached a point right now where uh those that are single yeah they're they're, they're gambling life you know you yeah. mentioned the word that they're just gambling life yes and you used a very good analogy that you are flying a plane you have people and you reach a certain destination and say my goodness the flight was great <laughs> we enjoyed it but guess what <laughs> i don't know where we are now i, I always tell uh, men it's like Climbing a ladder, especially yeah. in the corporate space when yes. I'm doing my trainings, yeah. that you can climb a ladder and you realize that ladder was leaning on the wrong wall. Wow. And you've reached the top. You've reached the top. <laughs> <laughs> How painful. How painful the yeah. time you've spent. Yeah. And so we have very many men that are not leading courageously because they have climbed the wrong wall. wall. Yeah. They have flown the plane, but the plane has gone to the a destination that they were not intending. Yeah. And chaos comes. Yeah. Our homes now are not being led by men. Something else is leading. And the devil is leading. And the devil will lead. Yeah. Because that's what we see in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. When Adam abdicated his responsibility to lead, the devil led. Yeah. Men, listen to me very carefully. When you don't lead, the enemy will lead. And you don't want the enemy to lead. lead because he will lead you in a wrong direction. direction. Yeah. You'll end up in a wrong destination. destination. Your destiny is shaped by your decision and your vision. Yes. When you do not have a vision, your people are wondering. And remember, I was, why is this woman nagging me? Where, <laughs> how, I, what, what do you see five years from now? What she's asking from you is direction, is yes. vision. Yes. What she's asking you, where are you leading us? Yes. Where are you, for, for heaven's sake, where are you taking us, John? Yes. She would ask me and I thought I would, I would just be angered by it. I would just be, feel resentment. Why are you disturbing yeah. me? Yeah. You say, well, this is my time. This is my space. Why are you asking me about tomorrow? We shall. God has given us today's food. <laughs> so, but I, I do not know where we are. There. No, yeah. she needed to know ten years from now. And yeah. she, uh, the women can be like that. Absolutely. They can ask you five Absolutely. years from. Where are you taking me? Where are we going? Where, where is going? this plane going? Where is this plane? In fact, our women mm. accepted us because of that manifesto, the yes. vision that we gave them. We yes. painted a picture for them. Yes. They never accepted us because of the good looks. No. But because of what we were, we were taking yes. them. Yes. My, so <laughs> my wife always says. A man will always be handsome if he has a vision and he works, has resources to take you there. Yes. <laughs> That's powerful. A man will always be handsome yes. if he has a vision yes. and the resources to, to finance the vision. Take you there. Wow. But now for the young people, I'm seeing, you see, without vision, people perish. Yes. So they gamble. I'm going back to that word. I'm seeing young people gambling there. Yes, life. they're gambling with life. Because they have no what? Vision. They have no vision. How, what, what would be your advice? Where do you start from? And if you mentioned some of the things, go to a church that has a vision. Go, yeah. where, where do you start from? I, for I, that young man. For the young man, I, I think we have to seek mentorship. And we, very. Really, we are very, 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 very important for us is um, at Encounter, we are very intentional with teenagers. Very intentional. I want my time to be controlled. My Tuesday afternoon, I do nothing. 
but spend time with them. Yeah. You see, when you spend time with a person, yes. people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Absolutely. When you walk a journey with them, when you understand where they are, yes. and then tell them that this is the way you should go, I am telling them the truth and helping them understand there is a lie, but there also there is the truth. Yes. And we have to conduct our lives with the truth of God's word. He has given us his standard. Yes. He will not uh, uh, reduce his standard. Yes. That's what we are going to So walk with someone. I'm walking with someone because I'm also walking with Pastor Andrew. Yes. He's pulling up my hand as I pull out a young person. As that's what we need. That chain. That chain that no man happened. left behind. We don't yes. leave any person behind. We don't leave Whether our young, sons behind. Yes. We don't leave them at home watching movies. And for us, we, 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 we don't make time with them. We do life with them. Yes. I, I, I remember the, there's a time when, when I took my, my, my daughter and, uh, and my son. I went to their school and I was present. And, uh, they were doing MDD. And and when I, I at some point I said, hey, man, I've spent the whole day I've missed. Them. But for them it was like a whole life. They said, Daddy, today was a very good day. We ate ice cream. We watched. We danced for you. You came to our school. They were amazed yeah. by that. So it's important that young men and men actually look for men to do life with. I so young men have to do life with men. Yes. And as we, we, we are doing our discipleship classes, mm -hmm. we have already started. So let's do life with men. Yes. And I think for me that's very important. Yeah. And, and the other aspect of leadership that you've mentioned is you have to be mentored yeah. for these vision things. <laughs> these things don't just come from heaven. Yeah. They come from, from leadership, the way yes. we lead our lives. Um, but the other thing about leadership that for me I witnessed recently yeah. um, I don't like it when a man is told, especially married men, yeah. you, your wife comes and says, okay, uh, this is and this is happening at home. And, and you say, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> what do you think? Yes. She's asking for direction. Yeah. She's asking for leadership. And for you, all you're saying is, I don't know. Yeah. Go and find out. Go and find out. You're the fountain of wisdom in that home. Yes. And she has come to the fountain to drink. Yes. And the fountain is dry. It's dry. The brook is dry. <laughs> And you even don't know that it's, yes, dry. it's dry. And so what will happen to that lady? She will come to the pastor. She will come to the pastor. And if she's pastored by me, <laughs> she will be on fire. She will be on fire. And that's a challenge. Yes. So you find that many young ladies, many married women, they are coming to the church to get vision. They are coming to the pastors. So you find that the pastors are running the home. Yes. It's disaster. Yes. It's disaster. It's disaster. And why is it that? Because then the man goes back to our first point. Yes. Becomes passive. Passive. Anyway, it's happening. Things it's are happening. happening. Uh, things, things are happening. Are happening. And you're not, not part, you're, you're not on the field. Ah. You're not on the field. You're not participating. You're you know? not leading. You're not leading. And you're not leading courageously. And you, you know, one of the things that uh, you, a gift you can give to your children is loving their mother and leading her. Yes. When you lead their mother and she feels she feels you women know that they are late of course when she she feels led and she's i mean that's 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 the love they are getting yeah. from you that's the direction yeah. your children will also obey they will follow suit Absolutely. because they are looking at the model you're creating for them there's security in godly leadership yes i have found this and i know there's a pushback from the feminist agenda yeah but i've never found a woman who is under the canopy of servant leadership a yeah. man who loves the lord and empowers her and releases her and gives her every resource to flourish. Because yes. that's what our leadership is. Yes. I lead my home. I want Angel to flourish, to be the best that that's God created yes. her. But not only Angel, all my daughters. Yes. The daughters are church. My job is to give them the platform so that they can be the best that God has, has created. created them. That's servant leadership. Yes. That's what God has called yes. us to, to do. do, to lead courageously in that matter. There's a statement. There's a, you're qualified to lead to the degree you're willing to serve. Say that again. You're qualified to lead to mm -hmm. the degree you're willing to serve. Uh -huh. When I serve at church, yes, you know that's the greatest call. Jesus yes. exemplified it yes. when he washed his disciples' feet. Yes, like you, they were it's time people to say, "Don't, why, 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 you, okay." In fact, you wash my whole body. <laughs> But Jesus exemplified that for us and said, you are qualified to lead men. Serving your family yes. is leadership. Hallelujah. When I go home and I've shopped and I've done this, I've done this, and I've provided, I shower my kids. Before, I Very never good. used to do that. I thought, that's it. How can they see me shower my kids? Nothing has reduced on me. My Nothing. height is still here. Yeah. 
my money is still here. Yeah. My my space is still there. Yeah. I shower my kids. I relieve I, I relieve my wife of some pressures. Very good. And she enjoys the space. Very good. She feels that her man is around. Yes. You're the, leading. You're I'm leading through serving. Way. I'm leading through serving. I do the dishes. Yes. I wash the house. I can be able to do that. I at, at times I I cook well, though not very well, but I can cook eggs. I fly the eggs. <laughs> I fly the eggs for her, and and, and, and for she she enjoys them and say, oh honey, it's a bit salty but it's nice. <laughs> but but at the end of the day, I'm doing the most important thing is that I'm in there doing it. You're serving. I'm serving. I don't have to be perfect. Yes, but because I'm serving. I'm present. <laughs> you know the challenge is this: yeah. some men, you are at home. You're like you're in a hotel. Yeah. You're a visitor. You look. You check in, <laughs> and then they check you out. It is. <laughs> And then they think they are leading. How can you lead when you're a visitor? When I go in the hotel, I'm yeah. not leading. That's someone's hotel. That's someone's hotel. I check in and I check out. Some men are checking into their homes. Their homes. They are visitors. They are visitors. Same with young men. Yeah. Young men out there. You are visitors at home. You check in and for them, they don't check into the home. Yeah. The man checks in into the home. Yes. The boy is there. They are checking into their room. Their room. <laughs> And, and there is no life in the room. Nothing. No leadership. No life. You need to get out of that room yes. and start doing life with people. Yes. Start playing. The, I encourage young people. Get off the phone yes. and start doing life with the people. Have a conversation with someone. That's true. At camp, what we have very and we have camp this year. Test. At camp, what I used to see young people. There is a, a child who came to me and told me, for the first time, Pastor John, I, I have been away from my phone and I actually didn't miss it. Hallelujah. For eight hours, she was away in between sessions we take away these phones these distractions and we just teaching them the word we share testaments they will say and we are having quite an amazing encounters this year we're doing it again and i'm excited about it <laughs> so you, you know the young people we are doing life they are able to connect they yes. have made friendships they yes. are able to do i mean course works together yes. Yes. that's what life is about it's about doing They're life leading. with people yes you lead your life yes you lead your life you're not gambling you're not gambling you're not gambling it. Someone holds you accountable. I'm accountable yes. to my wife. I'm accountable to my pastors. Yes. So they, my pastor summons me. I say, I show up yep. because I'm accountable to him. And John, this podcast is for you. <laughs> <laughs> You're on fire today. Now, we have looked at leading courageously. courageously. Yeah. And for me, what's, what, 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 two things that have come up. Yeah. You're flying to a destination and you realize that it's a wrong destination. destination. Yeah. You've climbed the ladder, you realize you're on the <laughs> wrong, wrong wall. Yeah. Leading courageously, also we mentioned about the gold. Yes. Men are gold. Fire refines the man. Refines the man, yes. It doesn't break him. It doesn't if break it him. breaks him, you are not gold, you are plastic. <laughs> if you melted, <laughs> check your composition. The composition is not gold. That one is... Plastic, plastic men. And at encounter, we are not developing plastic men. Yeah, it's gold. It's gold. Pressure. We are refined by pressure. Pressure. The Lord, by, uh, the Lord, with, with the Lord we take on refines refines us. Refines us. We yeah. lead it courageously. Yeah. Joshua led courageously. Jesus led courageously. As a matter of fact, the statement that Joshua makes amazes me, Musumba. He said, "Um, now." You've seen me do this life and what and everything. But today choose this day yeah. whom you will serve. Yes. He he had the courage to tell them. He yes. Stood, he made the children of Israel stand and tell yes. them, choose this to day do. whom you will serve. You will serve. But, for but me, even before you choose, wait, wait before you choose. But for, for me, me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So I don't care about what you're going to choose. But for me, I've already chosen. chosen. And then Jesus shows up yes. in the New Testament and he's, he finds these guys playing around yes. in the house of the Father. Woo! <laughs> and anger is around. Oh, holy anger. Holy the anger. man gets the table. Yes. He throws what matters the, most. <laughs> he fights. He's leading in what matters most. You see, because we are not leading, we are not defending what matters the most, the things that are creeping in society, yes. they are creeping in our homes. Yes. We are allowing soap operas to mm. rule our yes. homes. Cartoons are yes. the ones which are ruling families. DSTV. Yes, a father can easily give a child a phone to, yes. to, to, to cut. I, I'm doing something. I'm but you're giving a child the phone, you're handing over to him, your child over to the devil. To lead. Yeah, to lead. 
Because on these phones, these guys, um, uh, the, the people who are were making these phones, you made this statement and say, the people who are making these phones, the social media, their children are not on these they're not gadgets. There. They're not there. But for you, your children, again, they pass the child to the phone. I need to have some concentration. Your concentration is your children. Your, children. your responsibility. Is Make children. time with them. And for me, that's where courage is. Yeah. When I look at Jesus in the temple. Wow. Debating with those uh, 12, twelve years, twelve years, <laughs> then he shows up and he finds people doing yeah. uh, business in business. their father's or in the in in the father's house. He was courageous. He led. Yes, we can see that on the cross. On the cross, when he should have said, "Ah, partner, this Apana. is too much." No, Jesus was gold. Yeah, pressure, pressure refined. Yeah, he didn't crack. It refined. He did not crack. Under pressure. No. When you crack under pressure, composition. Take the composition. <laughs> composition. Now let's dive into investing eternally. eternally. Yeah. <laughs> investing eternally. And we tell men to invest eternally means building a legacy, yeah. having dominion, living something, building on things that outlive you. you. Building things that outlive your generation. Yeah. We're investing on things that we know beyond a shadow of doubt. Yeah. They matter. They will outlive us, whether in society, whether in our homes, with our church. Yeah, We're yeah. building things that are eternal. Yes. We spend most of our time. Listen, man, we spend most of our time on things that are eternal. Yeah. How has that played out in your family? There's a testimonies <laughs> that you've had there. Yeah. Um, Pastor, I'd like to start off by saying, you know, this when you talked about when you taught us about investing eternally. I, I started to reevaluate my life. I, I was taken aback just to think through my life. Yeah. And I remember an analogy one, one person told me. He said, um, when a person dies, their body is laid down in the sitting room. Yes. And then they, they, they say, oh, he has died. He has died. And then when they put them, when they are their casket down in the grave, they say, um, he, he has indeed died. Mm. But then the actual death is, when your name is not remembered. That's no legacy. Yes. 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. There is a man whose name we still speak of today. What a legacy. What a legacy. We still speak of that name because of the, the things he did. Yes. He was, live, he was willing to die. Yes. Man, we are going to die to things that don't matter. Yes. And resurrect to things that matter. Yes. And live for things that actually... If you have nothing to die for, you have nothing to, to, live. Live, to live for. Yes. And so Jesus' name is still mentioned today. Yes. More than any other name in this world. There is no name that is to be named than the name of Jesus because he lived a legacy. Yes. So when we are talking about living legacy and investing eternally, that's our motto. Yes. So I want to come from that aspect that Jesus Christ is our model. Yes. And he has invested. The reason why we're speaking of the name Jesus so so passionately, when you have an experience with him at yeah. encounter, yeah. you even in the encounters when you have deliverances, we have prayed, we've seen deliverances, we've seen yes. miracles happen Hallelujah. at encounter. Hallelujah. Because we have an experience with this name yes. that is above every other name. Yes. That's about legacy. Legacy. Something that outlives you. That outlives you. Jesus is not here. Yes. But he's, he's with us inside Indeed. us. Yes. He has outlived him. Yes. So as a man, what are those things that you're going to live for? You're not going to live for things which are, are, are temporal. Yes. Things which are, are, you know, that in your comfort, there's nothing manly about comfort, comfort zone. No. There's nothing manly about being comf comfortable in those areas. Yes. I want to do things that will leave me. Recently, my wife, just uh, just a year ago, yeah. of course, after hearing these teachings and what, for me, I was set on fire. I think this year I'll be going to the moon. <laughs> because my wife, <laughs> my wife, we started at a community-based hospital. Yes. And we're working with one of our deacons here at the church, an amazing man, Charles. And he, 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 he has blown our mind. He said, guys, you can do it. And then he introduced us to a, a concept that is worldwide. Yeah. My wife is thinking global. Very good. We are thinking global. We started a community-based hospital. She's planting green. She's doing a One Health perspective there and doing... To, she has treated people. She, she has personally treated people. Wow. 150 people on record. Wow. Got treated and got well. In the community. And when she tells them, she will pray, she will pray and says, you know, uh, the, the, the healer is in the house. Yes. Pastor and uh, Pastor Simon called it a guonero. Mm. That yours is not a, a dual, you know. <laughs> yours is a guonero. Because when people come there, they get healed. Really? 
So it's about investing eternally. Yes. It's something that you're helping others. Yes. You're it's about other people. It's about outward looking. Yes, you're investing in people that, yeah. that that seed will live forever. Forever, yes. There's something you did with your children on values yeah. and something. Some Again, you're building eternally. What, what did you do with your kids and values? Now, one of the things that, uh, and I've learned most of these things from you, one of the things that I, I, I'm learning and I'm doing in my home is, is, is to, to be intentional, present. I'm present with them and I teach them. I remember there's a time uh, my, my son, um, and, and I, I mentioned it in the previous podcast, my son came to me and he was all crying. Yeah. And I told him how men don't cry all the time. Yes. Men are shaped by pressure. Yes. So you're not, uh, you're not about to cry in, in this house. We rise up and go. I do chores to, for them to see me do them. Not to be, to, to really, because I told them that as long as you can eat, as long as you eat, then you should know how to cook. Very good. So Very I teach good. them. Investing eternally means doing life with them. Yes, you made values. It's basic. I create the values, values. and leave we them love out. People. Yeah. We are don't general. do as I do. No. But uh, you know that kind of thing. No, no. But do as I don't do as I. I, I say. I say. I, but don't do as I do. But don't do as I say. Yes. No. 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 People, monkey see, monkey do. do yes. My kids see me. I remember one time I, sh I, 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 my wife went shopping and we bought suits because at Encounter we are very smart, <laughs> very smart. I would like to applaud the Encounter for being smart. Keep on because the way you dress is the way you'll be addressed. Yes, your dressing will introduce you. Yes, yeah. You know, it it, it, it it does not represent you, but it introduces you. So keep dressing on, encounter you. You're the best dressed church I've seen on the globe. And and, and when I, my kids were telling me, Daddy, I need to also dress like you. Yes, very good. I need to dress like, like you. you. So they are adopting. They are adopting. Adopting. So now I put on suits, they and my young man got a suit. Got and he was happy. Yes. That night he did not sleep. Yes, you tell the truth, he also tells the, the truth. truth. Those are values. They're values. I, I tell. I, I was telling them if the Mugabe family. I remember when you told us about about te, um, our visions. I, I listed them and say, "Feba Mugabe te tulimba." Yes. We don't lie. Yes. We tell the truth. Yes. We put it in Luganda and translated it in mm. English. Yes. Feba Mugabe tu agaliza. We mm. love people. Mm. We are people lovers. So when I define those values, I see my kids telling others, "Feba Mugabe te tu te." Yes. So I've, I'm burning the spirit of anger away from them yes. because yes. Wow. we are not moved by. So when you define those values, they shape them. They they are they are rhyming they with eternal. them. They are eternal. They say ah, yes. eh, when when the sister lies and say ah, daddy, yatu gamba tetulimba, and so that is something that I'm investing eternally in, in them. What are your parting shots? I think God has called us to invest eternally, and 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 all these um, these things that we have talked to you, men, last month and this month, we've talked to you about all these things. The yeah. the, the, the four things. In fact, these things for me, uh, I took them on and tried, uh, decided to apply them in my life. Yes. Let's apply the truth because truth is like soap; it only yes. works when applied. If yeah. you don't apply the truth that you have heard, how will you know it? Yes, it works. So let's apply the truth that the truth that we have learned from our pastors. We are being they they do a lot of research. I am in, impressed by how much Pastor Andrew does research. You just come and teach for a two, uh, a thirty minute sermon. He does research for weeks and months. We are seeing seeing people uh, uh, rising out of. Uh, temptations arising out of mediocrity arising out of and taking their space we are conquering areas because there is a leader ahead of us right. and there is someone who is doing a good life so invest eternally he's investing eternally in us we are investing eternally in our children you too you can invest eternally thank you john it's been a pleasure to be with you yeah. and to all of you that are out there that are watching this podcast and sharing it as men and uh, wives that are giving it to their spouses to their husbands as young men sharing it girlfriend you're sharing it with another young man i want you to subscribe to this youtube channel i want you to get this content whatever you consume it from share it we want to make men better we want to build great Man. And that encounter, we are committed to that. My takeaway today that I want to leave to you, you are gold. You are either gold or plastic. Men are leaders. We lead courageously. When yeah. you don't lead uh, courageously, you become plastic. Yes. And we don't want you to be a plastic man. Yeah. But also we invest eternally. Get a yeah. church to serve in. Get a church and go behind them. 
behind the pastor and, yeah. and, and, and serve and serve. In your house, serve. As a young man, serve. Give your life to things that matter, things that will outlive you. We are here to build a legacy so that we can have dominion. Yeah. From the team here and the crew at Encounter, we love you. We pray for you. If you need any feedback from us, if you want us to connect with you, we are already in our classes as a church, discipling men every Saturday. So if you want anything from us, just let us know. I'm committed to building you. God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye.